Thank you. Hello. Uh, <coughs> I'm not an ac academic, I'm a practitioner, but with one foot in the door of academia as a part-time lecturer and also animation syllabus assessor, I do have something to share. <coughs> I discovered long ago, uh, also as a film critic, uh, did we, that uh, film has been using art for a long time, you know, from the very early days of cinema. And uh, for Malaysian cinema, for me, for it to be less isolated, the animation as well as film studies, people need to open up to the history of art. And art history too cannot avoid film. Unfortunately, that's not the situation in Malaysia. I don't know about it here. Now, if you think that was original, actually some of it is in this book. She beat me to the gun. I've been talking about this for many, many years, but unfortunately they are not listening. So just a quick overview of animation in Asia. So basically there are two mainstream uh, animators and independents, and their influences in animation came from the from America as well as uh, uh, East European countries and it began uh, with outsourcing and then they had joint ventures and then they brought in people to train the locals and then when digital technology came, uh, came in the number of animators increased so while the West was sleeping we were working and vice versa so that helped to uh, uh, give us more <coughs> uh, work um, and uh, uh, what do you call and later we began uh, with government support we began to develop our own IP and Malaysia particularly has now got uh, very strong IPs and we have done work for Nelvana, Cartoon Network, uh, Nickelodeon and Disney Asia and then with formal training beginning around 1999 we had universities uh, beginning to teach animation and now almost everybody is teaching animation and the story sources have been from all over. Novels, short stories, comics, the myths and legends, especially in the Nusantara area. Uh, folk tale, tradition, religious beliefs, and a bit of history. Now, history in Malaysia, uh, if you take classical literature, is a mix of history and uh, fables and a lot of other things. And sometimes very difficult to fathom which one was, uh, which part of it is true and which is not. And original ideas actually do not sell unless you promote them a lot. That's why Hollywood too doesn't know which film will sell and that's why they spend US $50 million uh, to promote a film and if it doesn't work in the first weekend, it goes straight to video. Uh, all the first fir feature films uh, in Asia were basically from uh, local legends, stories and so on. And um, including my film, I made uh, the Malaysia's first animated feature film. And you can see in Singapore's film, it was taken from those uh, 12 animals. And uh, in Indonesia, uh, from the Bonio, from Bonio, from Bonio story in China, the Hewok, uh, Hewok in Heaven, uh, the monkey god. And uh, design influences are from uh, Chinese opera. And in the Philippines, uh, Urdu, Urduha, I think, the pronunciation. It's almost like uh, a Pocahontas an actual 13th uh, century warrior princess <coughs> who is in love with the Chinese pirate. And in Thailand, uh, my friend uh, uh, Payut Nao Krachang, who died uh, a couple of years ago, uh, he did the first animated feature film and was the design, the, the story was from a, a novel or a local story and the design elements were from uh, Thai art itself. And when the second film was done uh, by another friend of mine, Kompin Kem Gun Nerd, I had a blue elephant, it was based on a book. And uh, you can see some of the, um, look at the wines and so on, eh? very, very Thai. And this one by Payut, uh, when he did his first short film, you can see how different Hanuman is uh, drawn as, as the, compared to the original from India. Now, animation in Malaysia began at the Malayan Film Unit that was set up by the British in 1946. And animation was possible because of an animation camera. It was brought in from Sri Lanka. And this is the one of the director generals of, uh, of the unit. Later, when uh, 
I became a producer and on and became my mentor. This is how the studio looked like in Bangsa. So it was a Japanese gold, uh, it was a paper go down and uh, this was taken in 1963. So this is the first animation ever done, stop frame animation of a house building by itself and uh, bullets moving because this was to teach people how to use the shotgun. So the mouse deer uh, was the first ca uh, any, uh, character to be animated. And the mouse deer is indigenous to the Nusantara region. Uh, the Kadazan Dusun have their own version. The Aborigines in Malaysia, Malaysia have their own, uh, in uh, Peninsula have their own version. In the Philippines and so on, and also in Indonesia. So uh, uh, it was a trickster at the very beginning. First, uh, there were some moral tears, of course, he's a good guy. But then he became a trickster because he wanted to get across to the other side of the river. He uh, bluffed the crocodile saying that I'm going to count all of you so that the king can get ready a feast for you. Now today in uh, Hollywood cinema, we have a, a trickster hero. So from the archetypal hero went to the anti-hero and then went to the reluctant hero and so on. So we have a trickster hero in Fast and Furious 8 and in um, uh, Iron Man. But the trickster hero was already there right from the very beginning in the village stories and uh, a lot of books have been published and I mentioned uh, all these books in my book on the history of animation in Malaysia that was published last year as a guide for students uh, to pick their, their final year projects, stories for their final year projects from and uh, more or less the stories in the Nusantara region are basically the same for instance you have the mouse deer uh, and the monkey, then you have the mouse deer and the crocodiles but sometimes in certain other stories we have the monkey fooling the crocodiles and uh, we also have many people from overseas who came and then they heard these oral stories, compiled them into books and uh, in Indonesia you have a lot of books about the mouse deer and uh, this is a collection of stories among whom, among which are the mouse deer stories and in the Philippines, they are called si plando. Plando is a Malay word, which means deer. So the first uh, anima short animated film uh, was based on the mouse deer. Uh, of course, the deer, mouse deer looked like deer, because they saw, they brought in two mouse deer, but they said it's not too nice to look at. So they made it something like Bambi. And uh, it's about the crocodile grabbing hold of the buffalo's leg and not wanting to let go and uh, the mouse deer comes in and helps uh, the buffalo. So the story was taken from a collection of stories that were written by A. Arthur Hill and, uh, and compiled by A. Arthur Hill and W. W. Skitt published in 1938. And uh, I have a copy of the original book. So when I came in, uh, in uh, to work at the, this studio in 1968, I was a graphics designer doing titling all by hand. Mm -hmm. So in 1972, I got into animation accidentally, uh, learning things on the job. And then in 1983, a new Minister of Information came. And if not for the first film, I would not be here talking to you and relation would not know about the history of animation in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So I was thrown into the deep end of the pool and I, uh, I was asked to make 13 episodes. I opened the newspaper on Sunday and I said, is that so? How come I'm the head of the unit and I do not know this? So anyway, uh, I wrote the script, I directed, I planned all the scenes and actually all these films were training films for my staff who knew nothing at all. They, only, they were only trained designers. So I did the first one, it was five minutes to six months and uh, we did all by hand, painting the characters and so on. So they were based on, uh, uh, I'll show it in a moment. So, as you can see, <coughs> my character design is a bit uh, <coughs> different from the first one. Uh, looks more like a deer, except that still looks like Bambi. The background design was uh, more based on uh, the local uh, popular art. And it had a cinema style, meaning that when we painted it, it was very detailed. It was for the cinema screen, because we were shooting it on 35mm film. But when we went to the second one, I said, let's uh, look at it a bit more clearly. Uh, all our hard work is going to be lost when it comes out on TV. So now we have a TV version. So as you can see, the 
the there are no airbrush effects but stones but when it comes out on TV it looks like airbrush work and then I did uh, three films using uh, Aesop's Fables the way Disney did it at the very beginning so um, uh, that's the uh, uh, hair and the tortoise I gave it a twist and then in 1995 uh, Malaysia's first animated TV series began and now digital technology came in and they were using a very low-end software which cost maybe about 300 ringgit and they drew with a mouse directly uh, uh, without using paper so they drew uh, and it came out on the screen and the coloring was not so good at the very beginning but it became, kept on becoming better it was very popular but had very high ratings and uh, when Lat, our very famous our world famous cartoonist uh, was asked by the TV satellite station uh, to uh, get his character animated. They brought in someone from Hollywood and uh, everything was developed in Los Angeles. Animation was done in uh, the Philippines, the post done in Vietnam. And uh, so it was not really a, a Malaysian production, only the producer was Malaysian. So as you can see, this is from his book, two books, Kampung Boy, uh, and then we had Town Boy. And they tried to recreate with Lat being the consultant and uh, this is how it came out it was very difficult to animate the character so in 1995 I was started working on the Malaysia's first animated feature film it was also a training film because other than I and the post-production supervisor nobody had worked on film and they didn't understand a lot of things and I even had we even had to run training sessions at the end of the day for them to understand. So, as you can see, the characters are based on uh, Malay uh, costume and uh, the story was taken from uh, the legend of uh, uh, the famous Hang Tua, the five, uh, Hang Tua and his four uh, warrior friends. <coughs> and then the story goes into the 21st century. And uh, we had the mentor uh, and we, I, when I wrote the screenplay, was based on Joseph Campbell's The Hero's Journey, made it a bit easier. And at the end, uh, we have the heroes winning over the evil woman who wanted to rule the world. But of course, we had to bring in the element from the 15th century to show that even though we are modern, but uh, we also have to look back at some of the good values that were in the ancient days and also some spiritual elements that have gotten lost among the Malays especially. So these are the background, uh, some of the background that I had done. And uh, my reference was Kazuo Oga, the Japanese uh, painter who worked for Hayao Miyazaki. So I visited the studio in 1997 and I especially wanted to go to the background department and I met, uh, Mi happened to meet Miyazaki who was there. But after he won the Academy Award, couldn't see him anymore. <laughs> so, uh, if you look at the styles of the background, some of it was done in the Philippines. You can see the similarity with uh, Kazuo Oga's uh, backgrounds. And uh, Jaffa Taib, a, a very famous cartoonist who started the Gila Gila magazine. Gila Gila is the, another version of the Mad magazine. So at the beginning it was a pure copy. But then it became better and better and his animal drawings were so good and uh, used to do had used to have these three panels and um, and he had a payoff at the end and because of doing these animal comics he got very influenced into going into the jungle taking photographs and doing his wonderful paintings which are selling very well as you can see so i was talking about animation being an isolated field that didn't react to the, uh, the artists or the, 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 the comics people or the music or theatre or whatever. So it was developing all on its own. But there is a question mark. So I am going to talk about shadow play as an inspiration for the Malaysian animators from the beginning and even now. So uh, as we all know, it's proto cinema, accepted as proto cinema all over the world. And I also see it as the earliest example of cut out animation which is not surprising because as you can see uh, Lotte Reiniger from Germany in 1926 when she made uh, she was influenced by Chinese shadow play animation 
So as you can see, uh, people from in the West are looking also to the East to see how they can uh, adapt uh, stories and styles to their own. So uh, that's the Chinese shadow play, and this is uh, some examples of her work, beautifully done and very intricate. So we have Nina Peli uh, in 2008. She did, uh, she took the Ramayana, changed it around and based it a little bit on her own life experience. And she also had uh, sh uh, shadow play elements there. So if you look at the characters in uh, Malaysian shadow play, this is a bit different from Javanese. Uh, we have the heroine, so the archetypal characters, eh? the hero, the villain, uh, what the goal, who is the jester or the clown. We see these characters also appearing in life as well as in uh, cinema. So in Star Wars, uh, not only did you steal Kurosawa's uh, hidden fortress story, but also our characters. So she uh, and look at Darth Vader. He's holding the lightsaber, <laughs> and he's like his uh, mask, eh? and C-3PO shot and fed. Uh, a friend of mine went to study animation in Poland, and uh, surprisingly, he came back looking for a local story, looking for local designs for his final year project. Whereas we have uh, uh, students in Malaysia doing robots and superheroes and so on, and forgetting the thing that we have. So uh, I met him and introduced him to one of my students who wrote the script. And he went around, looked at uh, Wayang Kulit, Pate and so on, how he could adapt all these designs uh, to his final year project. So as you can see, uh, his characters are like the shadow play characters. And the background, very much Batik. And even I, when I, in my feature film, I had uh, Javanese Wayang Kulit being suspended in this old shop as a homage to it as being proto cinema. So he looked at textiles and uh, uh, took a, a, a quite a bit from there for the, for his designs. <coughs> and um, what do you call? Ah, yes, the stories. So this was a master's project for a local lecturer uh, that she did in Australia. So it was based on a song uh, from the East Coast state. When the, before the fishermen go out to fish, they have certain rituals. So it's called Spirits of the Sea. And uh, I'll show it to you in a moment. And a student from Indonesia, she came to study at the Multimedia uh, University. And she also referred to shadow play and uh, village theater uh, in, a, in, in her home country. And this is the, one of the two examples of uh, short films done uh, by studios. See, there's no tradition of making self-expression films. And uh, I find, found it a problem when I was asked by Stuttgart uh, to curate uh, Malaysian animation. Uh, I couldn't take, I mean, I didn't have any to take from the <coughs> independent animators. You know, nobody was doing it. So I had to take student projects, some of the good ones. Uh, this is one of the better ones from the studios. So I'll just show you the video clip. Please show me how to do this. I'm a dead duck at this. So there are four films, Singapore Overrun by Swordfish, done by my friend, and then Spirits of the Sea, and Golden Cucumber, the Indonesian one, and then Onions and Artichoke by the local studio. So this is how they have done it. Pomyślał, że najmądrzej będzie spróbować zgubić ich w lesie.
kedua isi bungkusan itu belum cukup untuk menghentikannya. Timun Mas pun menaburkan isi bungkusan ketiga, yaitu biji mentimun yang seketika tumbuh dan berbuah amat lebat. Butuh hijau sangat menyukai mentimun, lalu ia menghabiskannya semua. Namun tak lama, akhirnya dia sadar dan kembali mengejar Timun Mas. Timun Mas sudah kelelahan, ia berdoa semoga bungkusan terakhirnya bisa menghentikan butuh hijau selamanya. Dan Timun Mas pun melemparkan bungkusan keempat yang berisi terasi. Dan apa yang terjadi? Terasi itu berubah menjadi lautan lumpur panas. Serta merta lumpur itu mengejar dan mengepung Buto Ijo. Buto Ijo menjerit ketika lumpur itu menggenangi badannya. Ia berteriak kesakitan. Lumpur teriakannya melemah ketika lumpur itu perlahan-lahan menenggelamkannya. Dia berada di bawang putih, no? Bawang Merah's mother kept a terrible secret. The death of bawang putih's mother was no accident. Nearby, singing her mother's favorite lullaby by the same pond where she had drowned. But one day, something most peculiar happened. A strange looking fish appeared to be singing with her. There was something very familiar about the fish. Singapore all run by swordfish was based on a legend uh, or, on Singapore and uh, it was in if you didn't understand the dialogue it was in Polish so um, uh, shadow play in, in Malaysia was killed by cinema and cinema became popular but today uh, shadow play lives on through cinema and a friend of mine is now developing a short animation film using uh, shadow play design but it looks like it's very very intricate I don't know how he's going to do it and he's also de done designs like this uh, based on the Indonesian shadow play characters <coughs> so uh, it has been animation has been isolated so far <coughs> from all the other uh, uh, art forms but there is a need now to look out instead of now everybody's doing 3D uh, robo robots, uh, superheroes and whatever they are too realistic, too representational so they need now to go to another level which is into the abstract realm into being expressionist and being experimental and uh, the first uh, and the only one uh, only animator who has done something based on painting and that on on uh, western painting Picasso uh, is the flower of Wernica by someone who is a lecturer now so it's 3D but rendered as 2D it was very nicely done but as we began to see other students uh, like this student from Iran who did a short animation film in Malaysia and then this is a uh, very nicely <coughs> done uh, uh, 3D rendered as 2D like Chinese uh, br uh, brush and this is a uh, Kogito Wonderland done uh, by a student of Koji Yamamura in Japan and this is by a student here uh, called Jabat Khajawi I think a PhD student called the third script which was in competition at the Jogja festival on which I was uh, on the jury recently and uh, it won an award <coughs> so now we see uh, animation going in a different direction but in Malaysia it's still stuck using characters and so on without it being expressionist so if you look at the uh, Erika Russell triangle even as far back as 1994 uh, doing it uh, manually she has based her film on African art and it's uh, rendered 
uh, with a lot of vibrant colors and so on. And uh, Jawad, when he did this, this was manually done uh, uh, with pastel on paper and also some artwork on paper. And it looks like it was entirely done with a computer. Of course, in post, uh, it would have done quite a number of things. But what is important to look at is he has taken it from his own uh, culture or religion uh, using calligraphy. So we also have calligraphy in Malaysia. There's a special school now set up by the government where they learn how to do calligraphy, especially the text from the Quran. So I'll just show this uh, uh, four things to show you in which direction animation has been going. Mm -hmm. What do I do? در تاریکی مطلق اهلی من چماری برخواست بر زمین جهید و همه مخلوقات احمرایی را نامد آسمان را شکاف آب را گرالود کرد شاخ پشمون گاف کشته شد و مرد
can't figure out how he did this. He said it's done peaceful on paper. So some of these firms were in competition. I was on the jury at uh, Xiamen in China and also in Jogja. So that's why you are getting a, ch a chance to see it. So Asian design inspirations have come from their own culture, their own tradition, their own costumes. As you can see, modern and traditional Japanese design probably give uh, the impetus to the kind of design we see in anime and manga. And uh, <coughs> even among our uh, costumes and uh, religion, we have this uh, uh, very intricate designs, which also probably give uh, what do you call uh, inspirations to the designers of today who are researching them. And in Balinese art, as you can see, so uh, complicated. And uh, if you are looking. Uh, uh, at the detail, you begin to spot a lot of things that you could not see from a distance. And a friend of mine who is a very famous comic and uh, uh, what do you call it? animator in Indonesia who is now working in the US, as you can see his uh, inspirations or his uh, 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 design elements are coming from something like what you saw before. In Malaysia, we already have artists who are doing a lot of things that can be animated and uh, running away from the representational. Here, we are using the batik uh, design. And this uh, friend, Azam Rizwan, who is now into uh, this kind of uh, design elements in his illustration, and the use of calligraphy, uh, rather than call human figures. So, Malaysian painting is something that we now have to look into. And this is Syed Ahmad Jamal, our nation laureate. <coughs> when I saw his painting for the first time, my mind went into it like it was like 3D. But at that time, we didn't have 3D software. But today, I think it's not impossible uh, to make a short film out of this by going to it. This, I'm told, was his uh, reaction to the arrest of Anwar Ibrahim. Because Anwar Ibrahim was his good friend. And here we have characters that look as if they cannot be animated by this artist, Harris Ribot. But as far as back as 1993, Mark Baker, a student, did a short animated film which has won so many awards with his characters who are all overweight and out of shape. And then we have Chakri Manso, uh, very vibrant colors. And this is uh, uh, Iban, I think, from uh, Sarawak. And then Muhammad Yusuf, who does this very nice batik style painting and this element of calligraphy being used. And uh, batik elements, and these are characters like Erika Russell's characters. So, Michael Antul Antonio, uh, Michael Angelo Antonioni was a very famous uh, Italian uh, film director. And Gilles Deleuze, <coughs> the philosopher, who has written only two books on film called Cinema 1 Cinema 2, uh, set of his film as a cinema of the book uh, characterized by a dualism of mind and body of course this is anathema to uh, many Asians because we always talk about the unity of God so a cinema of the body with the weight of the past the tiredness of the world and modern neurosis coupled with the cinema of the brain creativity of the brain is colors aroused by a new space time its powers aroused by artificial brains so probably he is also like uh, uh, McLuhan <coughs> who was looking into the future. So were they talking about how uh, digital technology was uh, going to help us out by going, uh, taking uh, uh, us through flights of our imagination, which we couldn't do in the traditional manner. So it's Malaysian animation and it's aesthetic, aesthetics and isolated feel. As we uh, saw, we had people from the West looking to the East. And here we also had our animators looking at our tradition traditional uh, performing arts and so on. But our artists are also looking, <coughs> our painters are also looking into batik and also into shadow play. So uh, who should we be following? So when you go to animation market, they always come up with this. We must live in a small pond but have a global outlook. That means do animation, don't follow what they are doing, it, uh, doing in America, but do your own thing. So, 
animation studies now need to open up the history and development of art and art history people who are teaching art history cannot just talk about art history now they have to look into films you know um, uh, of course uh, I'm making fun of academia because they will never get around to doing this why? I've been talking for many many years they are not listening I cannot blame the lecturers I think it's the management they, they just want to keep to what they have so thank you very much Thank you. We're running um, a kind of late like 20.